for your attendance. Um, it should be a wonderful evening. I'm Michelle Graves. I'm the Deputy Director over Arts and Events for the City of St. George. Larissa is joining me. She's our Administrative, uh, ad what's your call? What's your position? Yeah. Administrator over the St. George City Art Museum. And um, she'll be filming this tonight. We are delighted to have, as you know, our artist Mel Scott with us. And probably the good reason that you all came. I want to let you know that her work is upstairs and um, sorry, so you. And much of it is um, for, is for sale. So if you're interested in that aspect, <laughs> I will just put for you because you probably won't. You can see her about that. We also have a lovely um, gift shop if there are items that you want to purchase tonight. We'd be happy to put your name on them and set them aside for you if you see anything you like. The gift, the gift shop is closed this evening, but we can contact you to learn the workout arrangements if you see something you like. But mostly we want, and it looks like you did, uh, travel upstairs and um, view things that we want you to enjoy this evening. Um, of exploration with our artists. Let me give you a little bio on her. Mel was born in Richmond, Indiana, but has lived in St. George, Utah since 1970 and is now a regular desert rat. How many years did you keep to get that status? Doesn't I've, take long. I've been here 15, <laughs> and that's why I moved to be a desert rat. <laughs> on the exhibit, Wanderings, a 20-year journey with Mel Scott, she presents all mediums of her choice, watercolor, acrylics, oils, and pastels. Whatever the canvas, call, canvas calls for, she figures it out. If she finds a new and unusual medium, she will try it. In 2013, Mel retired from teaching at Tuacon High School for the Performing Arts, where she was the head of the Visual Arts Program for 10 years. Before that, she taught at Dixie State College for eight years. Mel has served on the Mayor's Visual Arts Committee several terms, and was the first president and one of the founding members of the Southern Utah Watercolor Society. She has won many awards for her artwork over the years and has paintings and drawings in private collections in most of the United States and in Europe. So we can give her a great round of applause and welcome. But I haven't died yet. Okay. And all of that makes me feel so old. <laughs> 70? <laughs> so, as you can see, I'm going to start with a slide presentation a little bit. Michelangelo was once a baby. But a great, result, great work as a result of her really struggle. And there you see. I wish I could be that excited. I think all of us at one time in our life need to be so excited we got to brush it off our hands. And we're looking for the colors. Give me it, give me that. So, yeah, let's switch to the next one. Uh, that, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was when I had six kids at home, underfoot. And uh, I had black hair. Yep. Good. Good. And um, there are some stories I could tell you, of, of, and I probably will come right around and, and say, I've known I was an artist from the, from the from when I was very 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 young. The first recollection I have of art was probably when I was two. To just old enough to stand at the edge of the table and look over the top. And I know it was my grandmother who was painting because she's the only one I know who had red nail polish. And I remember red nail polish and a brush and this little sailboat and Monica. That's my very first memory. So art comes, came really early, early from me. I knew. I knew. I've always known. Um, I got in trouble in school a lot. You know, not a lot, but often enough. Um, 
I got in trouble in probably like the fourth grade because I didn't write Happy Mother's Day the way the teacher said. H-A-P-P-Y, straight, and I twisted the letters and turned them upside down and did, did, did. And I, she told us all, you do a tulip, and it's a double U, and a U, and a stick, and two things. And I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do that. So I twisted my letters, I turned the tulip so it was coming out, because that's the tulip I saw. And I got in trouble for doing it differently. And I had to stay after school. But I couldn't tell my mother why, because it was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so I got in trouble at home. <laughs> and then Mother's Day, she opens the card and she's thrilled to death. Oh, this is so creative. This is so wonderful. This is so great. And I sat there and just cried and cried. And then the story came out. And she didn't say anything to me anymore. Just, I love your creativity, don't ever stop. But the next day at recess, I saw her leaving the principal's office. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and she told me later, she said, I told them, you will not kill that child's creativity. So I had somebody in my back pocket the whole time. Um, in fact, switch forward to when I've got a house full of little babies and we're, we're working, working hard. We've got all these bills and all this stuff coming up, you know, and I'm holding on to these babies and taking to be a mother and turn 29. It's a horrible year. Because <laughs> I had done the things I wanted to do by the time I was 30. And so, where do you go when you're depressed? So I walked to my mother's house, and I walked in and just came apart. And she said, oh, what mother said, oh, let's sit down, let's talk, you know. <laughs> and uh, so they came out. I was going to be 29. I love my children. I love my husband. I love my life. But there were other things I wanted to do. And she said, what is it? What do you want to do? And she had me write them on a piece of paper. I want to write a book. I want to play the guitar. Most of all, I want to paint. So, she and her wisdom said, Now, Melanie, what are you going to do to get those things? And I said, I'm assuming somebody's going to hand it to me, but they didn't. She said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I guess I'll babysit. I already had house school kids, but I'll babysit. And I earned enough money. I had like $15 saved, and I saw a guitar in a yard sale. And I said, that's mine. I went home, got, got the cash, and got the guitar. And then later that week, the lady I was visiting teaching this, she said, did you know that the high school is going to have a beginning guitar class and it's only $5 a week? I said, oh, yeah. So I did. I went to that. And I learned to play the guitar. But the most wonderful gift was the day that my mother and dad came to my house in the middle of the day told the kids to go out the backyard and they sat, and sat me down and my dad had a box behind his back and he got it out and in it, I unwrapped it, were about eight of the tiniest tubes of oil paint I've ever seen mm -hmm. and a little tiny bottle of turpentine and two pieces of canvas paper. They weren't even as big as this and a note. And I found out later that that box of paints were the same ones my mother had been given earlier, and she didn't get to use them. So I've always had family, family pushing me. 
always. If I need a frame, I go to my husband and I say, hey, I don't know how to do this. I, mean, I don't know what kind of And he's well, we'll figure it out. And he, and he does it. So I've always had support, which is wonderful. Writing positive affirmations down is vital. I just wrote them down. I want to play guitar and then walk away and let it happen. I want to write a book. Now, it's been about a month. I thought, wait a minute, have I written a book? <laughs> but, I opened my cupboard with all my sketchbooks and realized I have written a book. <laughs> I just colored in the margins and all. <laughs> and I have, I have stacks and stacks of sketchbooks. This particular one is extra special, and you're welcome to glance through it. it was, I was going to leave it upstairs, but it's so special because my grandson, who's uh, in the military, had this made for me in Afghanistan. He, he picked the pattern, he watched the man emboss it, I guess that's the term he did. And he told him what the paper he wanted, and when he came home that Christmas, this was my gift for him, to me. And um, this is uh, actually, I didn't know it was going to be a COVID diary, but <laughs> you know, when you, when, you can't, when you can't go out, when you can't go out and shop and do the things that you normally do, I wound up drawing and painting and collecting and putting it all in here. So this is my uh, book. This is this is my book. <laughs> and I have I have books all over the place. No matter where I go, I pick sketchbooks. I even paint on the outside. So um, yeah. So let's go to the next slide. Let's see what the next one is. It's not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that things are difficult. That was a hard painting. That was a hard thing to do. That's a huge canvas. That's one of the biggest canvases I've ever worked on. And I don't know how many times we walked back to um, to back Cinnawaba Trail, I think it's the end. And, um, I, I, that, that's, that, to me, that, that's church. Just don't, don't have church with God, that's what I like. So this is oil painting, and I dared to do it big. Look at this one. Do you know what the name of this is? What's the name of it? Oh, you're close. It says Dixie. Sugar Bar. The Sugar Bar. Yay, Kelton. Tell us about the sugar loaf. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> I, I was proud of myself for knowing that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When we first moved here to St. George, I knew it as the sugar loaf. That's what the pioneers, that's what my neighbors called it, was the sugar loaf. Because when the pioneers came to this valley, they didn't have white sugar. They had loaves of brown sugar, and they kept it on a little plate, platter on the table, under a bowl, and when they wanted sugar, they would slice it off. Slice off what they wanted. And so this is why it's called the sugar loaf. Mm -hmm. However, and I think it was in 1957, or 50, some one of those years in there, the high school started to paint the Dixie on the side. And so every year, the senior class would Paint the Dixie Hill. So now it's got the reputation of being the Dixie Hill, but the real name is the Sugar Loaf. Okay. <laughs> that takes me to another story about this building you're in right now. Do you know what this building used to be? What? Take a guess. The granary? Is it a granary or No. <clears throat> Milk. Sugar. 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 Sugar beet factory. This used to be the sugar beet factory. 
I've been involved with the arts in this community since 1974. Because uh, along with that list that I put down when I was 20, yeah, when I was younger, much younger, uh, I wanted to be more involved in the community. And I asked a neighbor, "What are you doing?" She said, "We're going to have a meeting tonight. Some of us are going to get together and decide what we want to do for the arts in town." So I went. There were only six of us, and there were six positions to vote in officers. And so I got voted in. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. One of the first things we did was try to keep this building because they wanted to, they were talking about just getting rid of it. So we had many fundraisers on the dirt floor and the wood beams around the equipment and we would set up our easels and our paints and we would paint and we would have nights where people could come and watch us paint and pay. And uh, so we were instrumental in keeping this building. The similar thing happened at the, uh, where the Children's Museum is now. Um, the city was going to raise that. And we said no. So we leased it from the city for a dollar a year. <laughs> and I used to have offices in there. It used to be the art building. And the very first art festival in St. George was in that building in the hallway. There were probably like 30 paintings from different people. And then the next year there was the hall and another room, and then another room the next year, and another room, another. And finally it outgrew that building to be running the park. So we've been we've been busy, 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 busy in this community to keep the arts. But you are in the sugar beet factory, <laughs> commonly known now as the St. George Art Museum. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, so this is the next one. <clears throat> Does anybody recognize this view? Have you ever ridden uh, on the way to Snow Canyon and passed the ledges? It's, it's off of there, but I took liberties. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of the sidewalk. <laughs> I think that's why I like being an artist. You know, I can move trees. <laughs> If I don't like the way the sky looks, I'll change it. If I don't like the foreground that's there, I'll move it. If I don't like all that, that's my job to change it. Okay, so this is watercolor. And uh, yeah, that was just done during COVID. <laughs> okay, it is upstairs. Next one. Okay, now, can anybody guess why I really like that statement? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Joyce, it should have my name under it. I tip my hat to nature, then I do as I please. Yeah. Hmm. This is a palette knife. There's no brush. I'm, and I did move rocks. And I did change colors because it felt right to me. Okay. I believe that each person in this room has the capability or is an artist. I really believe that. When you put on your makeup, when you comb your hair, when you get dressed, you're creating. Within, within this frame, you're creating a, a persona, a world within it. You are always the student in a one-person art school. And you're also the teacher of that class. Right? Yeah. So I do tip my hat to nature. I love nature, but I'm going to do it. Please make me paint that. Okay. All right. All right, let's go to the next one. So everybody's at family reunion up at Pine Valley hiking around and I can't do it because I have a walker. There she sits. <laughs> you know, you just can't hike on a trail with a walker. So I sit and I sketch. No, it's still quite great. Um, the Whipple Trail. 
that's the entrance to the trail head. Okay. Okay. Any questions about this? Yes. <coughs> Charm. Uh, what media? Oil. Yeah, that, that's an interesting thing. I don't stick with one medium. You know, I get bored. Let's face it. Uh, and I always want to push my brain into another area, and so I'm going, let's issue, let's give them all a challenge today. <laughs> let's try oils. You haven't done that for a couple of years. Let's get those out. So I have the tools. I have the toys. Why not use it? Okay? So that one's called for oil. Don't ask me how I call the oil. I just know. I just know that's what it was. Yeah. Yes. So do you choose the subject and then the medium or vice versa? It depends. It just depends on what what <coughs> this says up here. I, I never really quite know. I'll just, I'll just have a thought and go, oh, hmm. maybe I'll, I, I have to do that. <coughs> I have to do that. I took the photograph. I sat and sketched, did my reference, got my value studies done. And I did contemplate watercolor, acrylic, oil, or what? Mm, I don't care. But I haven't used my oils in a while, and I have a big canvas, and so why not? Yeah, so I may as well do oils, you know. But there's no, you, you've had my classes. You yeah. Know, you know what it's like. I'm just picking your brain. See, I'm glad you did. <laughs> you were picking my brain in high school, too. So. <laughs> yeah, Michelle. Do you ever paint the same picture in different medium? <laughs> Occasionally I might try it in another medium, but I would always change it, maybe the color scheme or something, but I think it could be similar. You're thinking of one in particular? You did with your wolves. Oh, yes, with the wolves. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and I don't have any of my wolves on here. But they've been all over Facebook. And uh, that was a commission, mm -hmm. um, and the author is right here. Stand up, <laughs> please. Stand up. So, this is my daughter. She's writing. She's asked, this is her second book, and she asked asked uh, me to do to do twelve bowls. And she sent me the pictures, and I did them in the medium that I like. So this. Yeah. I have one more question. Yes. How long is your average process? I'm not sure it varies, but what would you say from start to Until I'm done. <laughs> do you put some aside or do you just... Sometimes I do put them aside. Sometimes I put them aside and turn them upside down. I walk away from them. I may walk away from them for a year. But there's something off, and I don't know what it is, but when I change my perspective and my thinking about it, the problem will get solved when I get into a different space. It's just my way of working. And it seems seemed to work for students in high school. I mean, you, you'd start teaching high school, and the first thing you learn is, oh, Mrs. Scott, what if we did this instead? What if we, well, I don't want to do it that way. Could we do it this way? You know, so I learned to adapt to, to their needs. Um, actually, it's, it's really, um, it's an important thing to be loose, loose with your expectations, with your things. Don't get too tied up. So, yeah, okay, let's go to the next one. Another one. I think you know, those of you who know me know that I like birds. I have a bird in my house. And my most favorite bird is the cardinal. And I can mimic a bird's call and they will come. I'm talented, I can call a bird. <laughs> I can call a child, but I can call a bird. <laughs> so this was just a dream I had until I put it out. And that's oil. And these are birds that are here. 
or in Arizona in this area. And the Kirkville Thatcher, this one, the gray one right there, has the most gorgeous call. I've been doing research on him. You know, the Baltimore Oriole, the Meadowlarks, the Robins, the, you know, all the others. And, uh, and the Cardinal is not the only one in that that is not named of this area, but it is in Arizona. So I was in Arizona two weeks ago, and I sat outside, and every morning would whistle, and they would come. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and that is a gold leaf. Get a head off. Okay, this is the next one. Now, let's see if I can name all my pets. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was Brutus. You have your dog on it, the guy? Duchess. Duchess, okay. This was Peyton, right? This is Jack's dog. This is my Toby. I don't know whose cat that is, but I really like that cat. <laughs> somebody else's dog. So all of these have meaning to somebody. Uh, when I finished this, a lady, I put it on Facebook where some of you see my stuff, and a lady said, why did you put my dog in there? I can't remember what his name was. I think it was Biscuit or something like that. How come you put Biscuit in there? And I said, where? Where is Biscuit? <laughs> and then she showed me a picture, and that was her dog. <laughs> and I don't know how we got there. I don't know where it came from. I don't want to ask where these images come from, and I just put them out. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be there. And um, the cat that he's holding, uh, this was your cat up in, in uh, Cedar City. I had my grandson hold it so that I could get the position of the hands just right for that one. And the thing that was wrong was he was wearing a black shirt and the cat was black. So I had to, <laughs> so I had to say, Asher, uh, you need to wear a lighter shirt. Can I take that picture? <laughs> you know, sometimes I don't think they screw things through you know, enough. But uh, it's sort of like. Um, And it's, it's taken a while to get to the end of this particular painting, you know. Um, I've worked on him off and on for a couple of years. Um, and it also says that uh, paintings that you work the hardest at are usually the ones you learn the most from. And frequently, they are your favorites. Because you've worked so much on it, and it, it's telling you something. So, yeah, it's an interesting process, knowing that exactly when you walk in the studio, it's like a candy shop. Oh, wow. Ooh. What am I going to play with tonight? What can I get into today? So, yeah, yeah, it's sort of, sort of fun. Yeah, let's go to the next thing. And he's old. Uh, in 2018, I was invited to show the very first Invitational LDS Women's Art Show in Salt Lake City. And they gave us a scripture. And we had to read the scripture and then come up with our rendition of that scripture. And it was, I can't remember the chapter of the verse right now, but it was something about women with vision. Women with vision. And I drew out many, many different things, but I have this thing for trees and Mother Earth, and there's wisdom in the trunk of a tree. And so I wound up doing that one. Um, and it was interesting to go up to Salt Lake City, a block from the LDS Temple. And they had to be at a reception with all these other LDS women from all around the world and all of their different styles to see how one verse is so different to every single person that reads it. Is they all the same verse? Everyone had the very same verse. This is your verse. 
for everyone. And they only invited a certain number. There were only two others from Washington County who were invited to go out. And, uh, but there were people from Europe, Mexico, South America, Canada, the women who, who came in for this show. And the next, next exhibit, of course, was put off because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So there's another one that was supposed to be in February or January of 2021, uh, which, would, which is already passed. But they didn't know when it would open, so they now sent us a new scripture and a new verse. And they want these in September, so they're changing the date. So I didn't even start that. But um, it was interesting to read something and then to, then to do ponder and sketch and think, what does, what do I see? Words, words are lines. When you write, you're, a, you're an artist. Every time you sign your name, you're an artist. All art is, is a line that moves, okay? You can do it, you can do art in any material. Anything, piano, the scale, the notes go up, and they go down, and they go loud, and they go soft, the values change. Dance, well you move, you move, you sway, you do music. There, I, I can't think of an occupation that isn't artistic, that doesn't use the arts. Didn't I ask them that at school too? Yeah. Tell me a job that doesn't deal with the arts. Who would they always say? The garbage man. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Somebody designed this truck. An artist. Somebody designed the trash cans. An artist. Somebody designed the uniform. An artist. Somebody designed the logo. An artist. No, there's not one occupation in, in this world that doesn't deal with art. No, I'm stretching. Okay, we can stretch. Okay, so any questions about this one? Okay, let's go to the next one. Did you get an award? No. No. But you know what? To me, it's never about the award. It's never about selling. It's about being able to speak. The prize, always, always, always about the process. It's about the journey. It's not about, oh look, look, I saw so many, there's a lot of blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. It's about watching someone stand in front of a canvas or listen to your music and to read your words or to watch you dance. And watch them to touch their hearts. That's what it's about. All the art, touching hearts. Spirit speaks the spirit. Oh wow, speaking of music, I wonder if I can tell you the symphony this was made. Because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I put on I put on a symphony and I thought, ah, see, red. Yeah. Red. And then all of a sudden there was this. So I painted the whole thing to music. But like an idiot, I had to write down the so much. <laughs> and people say, why do you have forks there? I don't know, is that a fork? Is it a hand? Mm -hmm. Is it? Is the hand hold? What is it? People tell me stories about these and I go, wow, I like your story. <laughs> but yeah, because I don't know what my story is. I just, it felt good and I did it. Sometimes you want to play the notes really well, right? And other times, So there was 
no danger for me to think. But this is alcohol ink. And I'm painting with isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, 91%. And alcohol inks on this really, really fun paper called UPO. Oh, when I found that, I thought I knew I could have it. Somebody up there created this paper just for me. It's so wonderful. And you can paint with anything we didn't know. And I play. So does anybody recognize that place? Cedar Bridge? What? Cedar Bridge? It's uh, actually um, when you're down the temple, down down the temple, and you're looking up. This is the back um, when you're down at the Santa Walter Trail. The other one was looking that way, and this one is looking back, and you just see that white white cliff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when you know where the danger is, you avoid it, right? Mm -hmm. So please take it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always wondering what this one is. <laughs> so I'll tell you a little, a little story about this one. This one was, I was um, given a scholarship to go to a class in Oregon. I was, uh, I submitted all the art teachers, all American art teachers submitted paintings to get, in, get a scholarship to this place, and I won because of my watercolors. But when I got there, oh my goodness, no way I've never painted like that. I mean, there's, there's uh, plaster, the, the tape they use on plaster, what's it called? The, the mesh stuff? Yes, yeah, mesh. there's that. I use that for texture. I, it's got it's got all kinds of things in it. I threw it in, threw it in, and it was a watercolor paper and lay out and then soaked it, soaked it, soaked it, put color on, fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it, rolled it up, and threw things at it, and then laid it out and let it dry. And then I I didn't find any play box that day. <laughs> and uh, and I liked it. I like the idea that I can be free. Okay. Let's go to the next one. This was done the same style. It's always about the journey. By mm -hmm. Megan? Yeah. Yeah. Do I know what it is? <laughs> Does it matter? The style for this, this is, this is my Bible. In 1995, 1995, I was, charge, okay, cool. In 1995, I was given an opportunity. I won, I won a show here, I won Best of Show for a Watercolor in this building, and it was a regional show. And they gave me the opportunity to be the featured artist in the legacy room upstairs. Now I won because of a watercolor. So when the guy from the museum and I met, he says, you have that whole room to yourself and you have one year to, to, to pay. And I said, okay, how many watercolors do you want? I don't want watercolor. <laughs> what I went for was watercolor. He says, no, 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 no. He said, you, you have something to say you've never said before. I want you to do something you've never done before on a surface you're not familiar with in a way you've never painted before. Okay, freedom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I had just finished a workshop with these guys, Michelle Cassol and Stuart Cousin in Salt Lake City. In fact, this book is autographed by Michelle. And I had been going through it, and so I decided, oh. huh. So I'm gonna, you know, use this book. 
So a lot of these things that you're seeing up here are from this book, okay? Um, and Joyce brought up earlier a little thing when you uh, to paint for process, or are you going to paint for the product? Um, if you paint for the product, you have to follow the rules. And you know, you know, and I know, that you're a little girl, don't keep the rules very well. <laughs> don't tell me how to play the game because I'm going to do it my way. So I've been to a workshop where I spent three days playing in a medium I never used. Temper paint? I mean, temper paint. Big, huge sheets, flop, 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 you know. And I, oh yeah, yeah. When you paint for process, you listen to the magic of the impulse. And I learned in that workshop that I could trust the voice. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, these are alcohol leaves. Keeping it very simple. They're upstairs. Did you custom those frames? My framers, right there. I, that's, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have a tile, so big whoop. What am I going to do with it? How am I going to keep it in frame? So I just go to my sweet husband and say, I'm doing this nice thing in here. Can you help me? And he just says, well, let's design it. He does it. What, did you, what genius would you do? It's super cool. I <laughs> know, isn't that so fun? Yeah. And you'll see that these, these alcohol inks, I'm wearing one. <laughs> because these are photographs of my paintings that I put, that I work for a company that I put in my mm. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. I think we should be, this is the one. So this is part of that series that I had the year to prepare. And if you noticed, upstairs next to these, there was a big, my signature was backwards. Limb. Glenn talks. Because when the museum curator said, I want you to do something you've never done in a style you've never done, in a medium you've never used, I thought, oh, I can go back to kindergarten. So, my mother had died the year before. I went to my dad and I said, I want to use that room to paint in. And we made an agreement. I would paint in that room, and he was not going to make one comment about anything. <laughs> he just gave me free reign, and he did. So I put in my pictures everything I like, so much the worse for the things. They have to get along with one another. <laughs> Picasso said that, and I painted that. I painted for a whole year, letting the shapes and the values and the objects gel. And I wound up with, I think, 20, 20 or 30 images, and this is on canvas. And I hadn't really painted much on canvas, and I've never done acrylic on canvas, and I certainly hadn't done people, and I've never done an animal. And I just sat there and let things come. Kids were out of school, why not? Purple paint moment. So I did 19 of them and I got them done. And he came over and he looked at them and he says, okay, great. Now write about it. <laughs> I'm not a writer. Uh, yeah, you are. You just haven't tried it yet. Oh. How am I going to write about it? It's the same way you think about it. So he, he gave me an idea. He said, turn your canvases so you can see the image. Meditate, walk around the room, and when you feel inclined, stop at a canvas, pull it out, turn it around, and write the first words that come to you. Okay? That's what I did. I didn't write about everything, but I wrote about some of them. And I uh, 
this one always, always reminded me of Picasso's statement. You want it all in there. Let them find it out. Yeah. <laughs> now let's go to the next one. This is another part of that series. Now I don't know. I, I'm not, not into anatomy and lot of drawing and stuff. It doesn't matter to me. It's what comes. You trust what comes and you put it out. That was the job, was to place. Yeah, they gave me an opportunity to play for a whole year. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was like my grandma. And then when I came home, uh, my sister said it's not not Grandma Trisler or Grandma Lightning. It's um, it's Grandma Kreitzer. Oh. And then when my brother said, no, no, that's that's Dad. <laughs> They're all rolled in. I'm a conglomeration of all these people, you know. And I do a lot of self-portraits if I don't have anything else to draw. I'm getting real familiar with my eyes. Yeah, they're there. And my nose is on the end of my face. So, yeah, it's always there. Yeah. Draw all the time. <coughs> all the time. Don't stop drawing. Um, let's see, I think this is the end, isn't it? Or is it just one? No, there's a few more. There's I think there's six more. Oh, six more. Well, I'll go faster. Um, you have to, if you've been able to put a personal response into your work, others would feel it. I'll go real quick. This was an oil painting. I dreamed this. I dreamed this. I was a, I was a, um, doing a present, presentation in NAB at the business school uh, for artists, and uh, there were the Paris bombings. And in the night, I got up and I drew this out because I came in a dream. And when I came home, I painted it and took a picture of it and put it on Facebook. And it wasn't long after that I got a phone call. I need to talk to you about your painting. Okay, I thought, oh good, I sold it. Yeah, that's really cool. No, no. She called and she says, I need to know why you painted my life. So this one, someone else felt, and I was feeling, and we recognize each other. And she's in Indiana. So, uh, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Let's go to the next one. Improvised color, and then my brush goes between my fingers as a bow went on a violin, and absolutely for my own pleasure, Van Gogh. I had to go with the sunflower. Had to go with the sunflower. That's what I call it. Okay, go to the next. <sighs> Best color is found. This is because of two of my kids. We were terrified of watercolor. I don't want to do watercolor. It's scary. You can't make a mistake. But they would come in to class, some of them, with coffee. And I thought, oh, are you paying with coffee? <laughs> <laughs> so I just stood in the back of the room and we made different strengths of coffee and they came in with coffee <laughs> and learned values and how to use fluid pillars, you know, on paper. And um, always somebody would come up and say, um, well, what would happen if you put some blue in that? I don't know, what the watercolor was. And they would. So I'd trick them. <laughs> Isn't that what teachers do? Yeah. And they'd trick them. So that's a coffee painting. And they started selling them in the halls. I would, I would put them on the, on the walls and the kids would... <laughs> and they were starting to buy each other's paintings off the wall. And so I thought, okay. So I have painted with coffee. It works. <laughs> That's, I think that's probably the last one I've done. This is the one I, what I just did a week, a week ago at a class. Um, mysteries are not to be solved. The eye goes blind when it only wants to see. That is liquid watercolor. I get it in a jar and use it. It has, comes with a dropper. And I'm teaching classes on that. And I didn't know what it was. And I thought, ooh, cool. I don't know what you are, but you look really weird. <laughs> but it's, it's on your book. Well, we had a new book class. At the, I, I teach for the art factor. Um, and uh, Joyce is one of the teachers there, too. And um, the <laughs> class was Doc Martin Hybrid's watercolors and how to use UPL, so we played. And so that's only five by seven. 
but I'm just itching to do, do more of them, but in a big or in a big, it's not the If there's a medium out there that no one knows what to do with, they will call me and they will say, we got this thing down. You don't know what to do, we don't want to sell it. Can you come on? Right? Yep, yeah, I'll come. <laughs> I'm the girl with that. Okay, that should, I think that's the last one, isn't it? Two more. Oh, two, two more. more. You know <laughs> My favorite candy bar is a little teeny tiny Hershey's special dark. So his head is the inside of the wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> and for that one, if you get close and look there, I put plaster on the frame and chiseled in the designs and then <clears> came. <throat> Why not? Oh, yeah. Why not? Why not? Then there should be one more, right? Yes. <sighs> Throw your heart into a painting and jump in after it. For probably a year, I had this painting, not with the figure. The figure wasn't in it. But all of these colors were there on a piece of beautiful paper. And I'm a swimmer. And one night I dreamed that I was coming out of a swimming pool full of color. Mm. And so I pulled that out from under my bed and I pulled the figure. And do you recognize this? Mm -hmm. This is actually a photograph I think you took of my shadow. What? 30 years ago? <laughs> Something like that. And I pulled it out. But this is, this is what it is. Put your heart in the painting and jump in after it. Okay? Any questions? That's the last one, right? That's the last one. Okay. No questions? Come on. Am I scared? <laughs> yes. I have a question. Um, do you have any like symbolism? Like I noticed, you know, you had people holding, I don't know if they're flowers or bead or stuff. Do you use any of the symbolism? as you paint, or do you just take how you feel and other people interpret it for you? I don't ever interpret a painting. I don't, I don't interpret it for other people because I do the painting, I know how I feel, but if someone else feels something else, that's perfectly fine with me. But I don't I don't know. Do I do I put symbolism in it? I don't, I don't know if I do. I don't really paint with um, paint to a um, purpose. I don't paint to the frame. I paint what I want to paint when I want to paint it with whatever I want to paint with, and uh, get out of the way and just. <laughs> and I'm not too concerned with the end result. It doesn't. I know, I know from teaching, I know values, I know balance, I know all the terms, I know how to arrange, I know how to focus, I know how to do all of that. It's, I've done it for so long that it's instinctual, I don't even think about it. Frequently, I don't even sketch it out. I just look at the canvas, I go, oh, where do you want to be? Okay, all right, there, okay, right, So, um, to do the simple thing, this is what happens when you get a really good book, papers start coming in. To do the simple thing with integrity, a point, a line, a scribble, a rough image, is the most creative response that you can make. Think about that. A line. A line. A stroke. You'll notice my signature is one, one, one. And keep it simple, stupid. I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I would tell the kids at school, keep it simple, stupid. And they would always say, no, you mean stupid. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about you. I'm saying keep it simple. It took me 20 years to come up with a signature that was simple. Three lines is an M. Turn it this way, you've got an E. And this is another L. Boom, boom, boom. It's much easier to write. 
M-E-L-A-N-I-E-K, Scott. It's faster, it's quicker, time is money. <laughs> and it's just smell. Yeah, it's just smell. And the nice thing too is that they don't know if it's a man or a woman. And I've gotten several jobs because they it was a man. And they hired me over the phone. And even with two of mine. Oh, yeah. If this mouse up, yeah, it is. Uh -huh. We'd like to hire you to teach art. Great, I'd love to do that. Uh, do, you want to, do I need to come talk to you? Well, yeah, I thought we were going to be hiring a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously I'm not a man. I'll be there tomorrow and we'll just visit. <laughs> and I was there 10 years. But the society we live in, the women, the women, are not appreciated for their feminine femininity. They have to fit into a male-driven world. And there are ways. George Sand is not a man. What's the name? The real name. What's the real name, do you know? George Sand. What, what do we know her real name? We only know her pen name is George Sand. Okay. There are so many artists out there that use their initials. So nobody knows. I do it for economics. It's easier. When I'm done with the painting, I just went done. That's my last stroke. <laughs> any other any questions? Come on. You know these two little girls and this one back here? Joe and, uh, and Elizabeth, you want to stand up? These are my newest students. <laughs> they are nine and eight years old. And then Lily, Lily, stand up. Lily is my other student. And she's, how old are you, Lily? Ten. Ten. It's so much fun. <laughs> Okay. I was working on this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm working on the alcohol inks and the Doc Martin, Martin classes. And uh, actually, next Tuesday, I'm teaching colored pencils with on paper. So I will go home tomorrow and I will start playing the colored pencils <laughs> again. Uh, but I work in all these and I have special cupboards. Pencils are here, this is here, this is here, this is here. Which one am I going to open? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, have you yes. ever tried water for Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I tried all of the water color pencils. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any other meetings you want to know about? Anne. Um, do you have something that you haven't done that you want to do? Like in the future? Like, is there some kind of thing about how like it works? What's something that has to do with your art? Don't you want to do I can't hear you. How has to Something that you, have, you haven't done yet with your art? Like, how to show in Europe? Or, okay, I don't know. Um, I can't think right off the top of my head. I think my travels in Europe are over due to knees <coughs> being mature. <laughs> <laughs> I have another person at the pool who calls me an old woman. Oh, oh. they're going to get dumped. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I've taught it before. Mm -hmm. And the chalk. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. As an art educator in high school, I had to teach every medium, every medium to those kids. And I will tell you right now that I do not have a teaching certificate. I never went to the university to teach. I got my BFA and the Dixie College hired me to teach. And I said, I don't have a certificate. You won't need it because you have the professional skills. And so I had to, and it took on, I got the Utah State Court, what does they need? Okay, I'll teach myself to do this, 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 and this. We have photography. I didn't know how to do all that stuff, but I figured it out. <clears throat> Whatever you want to do, you can do. There's always a way. There's no reason. There, there's no reason to say, I can't. There's only a reason to say, hmm. I can do that. Hmm. Yeah. So you've asked me a good question. What's next on the drama board? I have a huge canvas. <laughs> and it's been sitting there for two years. It's even crying because it's all ready to go. I can watch it anyway. Maybe it'll be the next LDS thing. I don't know. I don't know. Another thing you may not know is that when my husband and I were on our mission for the LDS Church, I taught art. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what gifts do you have to give? All I have is what I have. Drawing, painting. And they came. They came with the classes. And my husband taught family genealogy and how to do that to the partners because we're in Oregon, a little teeny tiny town, they have to drive forever to get there. But they came. They came. Everyone in this room has gifts. You have gifts you you haven't even begun to have. All you have to do is just open your mind and say, oh, I can do anything I want. Which one first? Which one first? And it's, I, I don't know. <laughs> go back to the first. Can you go back to the very first one? The child of the bankrupt? <laughs> Only this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is how we should be 